What's up, guys? I'm Bormai. Welcome to the channel. If you're returning, thank you for your support. If you're new, hit the uh, subscribe button, turn notifications on. Make sure you guys like the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you like uh, like what you're seeing, what you think I could do to improve. Today, I'm doing an interview with uh, with a Twitch streamer, Entire Cities. What's up, man? How you doing? What's going on? What's up? Yeah. Not Pleasure much, to be here. Much. I really, really, really appreciate you coming by and doing this. Uh, no more so yeah. now than ever. Mm -hmm. So, how did you come up with the name Entire Cities, and what does that mean? Uh, Entire Cities. Um, well, back when I was young, a young lad, if you will, uh, I, I used to run by the, the call sign uh, ECNO, E C N O, which was uh, the word once spelled backwards. <laughs> um, and I used to go by Echno Sniper in Rainbow Six, which was the go-to FPS tactical shooter back in the day. Uh, you know, didn't even have a gun model in that game. It was just like a screen. But um, but yeah, I was I was coming up, um, you know, getting older, and I wanted something a little bit more adult. So I was trying to come up with a better, a better, more interesting name. And uh, I had my my textbook open. It was geography, and on on in the the paragraphs that I was just looking at, just looking for inspiration for a game or something, I, I saw that, uh, you know, the, the brilliant battle tactics, something, something, you know, would, would slice down or cut down the, the enemy forces, and I, I came up with brilliant slices. And then, in that same page, I was reading it, and it was, it was uh, you know, something to the effect of entire, uh, something entire cities would get decimated by the pure might of the military force. I, I don't remember the exact wording, but I was like, oh, entire cities. I was like, that's a good one, too. So for a while on Counter-Strike, I ran entire cities and Brilliant Slices simultaneously. And you can even see in some of my older videos on YouTube that I ran Brilliant Slices even when I started streaming. Wow. But yeah, that's, that's, um, that's how I came up with that, yeah. That's that's pretty crazy. It's uh, actually very interesting. Um, that's not you know how people come up with their name nowadays. Like for instance, Bormai. That's funny that Ekno was once backwards because uh, Bormai is I am Rob backwards. Yeah, I was I was looking at that as I said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So what got you into gaming? Into gaming? Um, unfortunately. My my parents are not too keen on my gaming, but uh, they they're the ones who started the the gaming bug in me. Um, it was one say, Christmas. One I want to say I was I want to say I was like four or five. He's lit, no um, My my dad was like, you know, there's a present behind for you behind the sofa. So I, I walked around the sofa, walked clear past the solid wood workbench that he got had got me, hoping that I was going to become a woodworker like he was. And I I went to the back uh, deck. I opened the door, snow everywhere, and I look on on the stairs and there was a Nintendo he told me that Santa had dropped off the roof uh, when I brought it in <laughs> <laughs> so that's wow. what got me started that was the Christmas um, I want to say it was like 1990 that that was the Christmas that got me started on gaming um, they had picked it up from a place called Funko Land which was a new and used game store it was the GameStop of the area in Connecticut that I worked or didn't work lived um, <laughs> And I just remember lo looking through their their catalog of new and used games. My dad would pick up on his way back from work, you know, once a week, and it would just be this like really low quality paper, newspaper print, and it would just be all the games that they had on uh, for sale there. And they were they would have the price right next to them. And I would just circle them. He'd come home, you know, once a month with Nintendo games for me, new ones, new blasters. It was just yeah, it was a cool experience there. Yeah, I'll right. Over this guy. Up, they had a I'll, uh, come up on place called Trader Joe's. Oh, what? You take your used games, you can trade them for new I games. Hit that, bro. That was a yeah, that was pretty cool. We didn't, they didn't have a paper it's though. You could here, go so through and say, "Oh, I want this, this." You know, have a wish list together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Funko Land even had. I, I don't know if it's their own sure. magazine, but it was called Game Informer, and that was what I used to get delivered for my game subscription magazine uh, okay. before Game Pro. Before I subscribe to that, but yeah, Game Informer was like a. I still have all the magazines too. I still have almost all of them. <laughs> so, what is your all-time favorite video game? All-time favorite? I have, I have more than one, and I, I feel like it would be doing 
gaming and an injustice if I had just one favorite game. But uh, the my top sure. three growing up, the most you know impactful in my life were um, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark. That's one game. You know, grow, growing up in neighborhoods, you know, going to sleepovers, having that cardboard in the in the middle of the TV, having screen peeking being a, a problem back then. That was the the first stream sniper, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then uh, Halo, going into college with Halo under my belt was just, it was huge for building friendships there, um, you know, playing between the, the dorm rooms and just having that first big experience of just gaming with, I think it was 16 players on Halo, or at least eight for sure. Um, and then, of course, Smash Brothers, just the, the all-around after party, if you will, of the first person you know, game. So after you guys got done just wrecking each other in Perfect Dark or Halo, you'd you'd fire up Smash Brothers and just unwind. Yeah, I, I do agree that those are awesome games. Um, I remember GoldenEye, and that was probably the very first first person shooter I got into where I wanted to play, and I'd play all my friends and you know, power weapons. Each other. Power Halo weapons. was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you got the golden gun, if you put it in, I mean, one shot kill, even if it hit their toe. I mean, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. awesome game. Halo was also amazing. I didn't really play too much um, multiplayer, but uh, just the game itself. I thought that was a uh, innovative game for you know. Oh yeah, that, that for, game changed my life. Like Two thousand. I mean, that was I, that was a while ago. Yeah, it was. It was it was the first yeah. large scale shooter that I played that just truly made me go wow. Smash Brothers was awesome too. I mean, I I, I only played that on on GameCube, so I don't know if it came out before GameCube was a thing. Yeah, it came out. Nintendo sixty four was the original, and then Smash Four Brothers Melee was on GameCube, and those are two of, in my opinion, the best versions of Smash Brothers. It was awesome. It was it was really a lot of fun. Mm-hmm, yeah. Who would be on your dream team of pro gamers if you had to like assemble a a, a, a Justice League or a, 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 an Avengers? You know, you were just putting together a pro gamer team, and it would be the best out there. Who would you put on that squad? Well, I don't know if it'd be the best out there, but I could probably assure you it'd be the most entertaining. Um, I would have I absolutely need Fatality on there. You know, uh, Shroud, uh, Ninja. And then, of course, Doctor Disrespect, because I, I need I need that six foot eight pure gaming athleticism <laughs> with the caterpillar. Um, yeah. just, I, I need that there for moral support. It's funny because uh, you know Doctor Disrespect. I always thought that that was like a wig and and a fake mustache, but you said that that's not. Uh, that's literally his hair the, and mustache. Yeah, the the wig is 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 really a wig, which was his. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, party in front, party in the back, whatever. But right, yeah, but that that, that caterpillar is uh that's all his man. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, so you know you wouldn't put me on your dream team of uh, pro gamers? I mean, come on. I hate to say that. No, prop. <clears throat> what I meant to say was yes. So yeah, you come on, man. Of course. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I've got twos of fans that would be disappointed <laughs> that you didn't want to put me on your pro team. <laughs> the dad jokes alone. Worth. What advice do you have for for young gamers who you know? are out there and, and want to get into streaming or YouTube or, you know, professional gaming or, or even just gaming in general? Uh, gaming in general, professional gaming, or even, uh, you know, being a gamer, uh, beyond, beside, be it beyond, like, communication with, like, your, your social circles and stuff like that. Um, if, if you're going to get into the game industry and you want to be a, a, a creative side of that game industry where you're either making games or you're doing, you know, videos for games or editing, um, all that can be taught, you know, by yourself. You don't need to go to school for that. And the, the biggest thing I saw growing up and the biggest hindrance that I had on myself was I thought I needed to go to college. Like, that's kind of like the old guard telling you that you're not going to be successful or, or go anywhere in life right. if you don't go to college. So this whole time growing up, I was like, man, I need to go to college and get a degree in gaming. Well, when I was growing up, that didn't exist, right? School of Arts didn't really embrace that whole side of it. You know, anybody who was in my age now, if they went to a School of Arts, it was for more traditional things like drawing or photography, right? Game design wasn't sure. there. Um, it, even then, though, and this is my fault for not identifying it and doing it, um, but 
nowadays for sure 100 percent. you can learn everything in the world about game design game development you can learn how to code you can learn how to do video editing you can learn how to do 3d modeling the texture design the texture art all that can be taught self-taught um if if you're going to pursue something you know in the entertainment side of things you know obviously learn how to do video editing but if you're going to try to like do you know daily videos or do a stream and become successful as 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 a streamer my biggest shortcoming there was was thinking that being uh, original was was a problem and I see that more now, but you know, trying to model myself after what works for other streamers kind of kind of held me back, in the sense that you know I, I needed to have you know a green screen, I needed to have you know good audio, I needed to have this perfect video quality all the time when streaming, and ultimately what it, what it came down to is the the personality I was kind of holding back my personality and not being myself, and you know that's. That's the biggest thing I I would say for young gamers. If I want to stream, you know, be yourself and just kind of find a niche. You know, find find your people on the internet. They exist. I promise. Yeah, that is great advice. Uh, I totally agree. I mean, who wants to watch the same thing over and over, right? I mean, so being unique and, and doing your own thing and having your own take is definitely got to be important. So you get you know a group of people who you know, you'd, you'd just get tired. It'd be boring, you know, watching the same thing from a different person, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are your passions outside of gaming? Uh, passions outside of gaming? Right now it's just uh, I, don't, I don't have a passion that I'm, I'm pursuing. My passion full-time is streaming, but um, for many years it was cars. Uh, I, I just had a, a real big passion for for sports tuners, you know, um, not necessarily muscle cars. I have a huge appreciation for, for muscle cars, but um, just growing up at the, you know, the, the what is it, the prime of Fast and Furious when Fast and Furious got released and seeing that and being around that, you know, of course, my whole youth and car culture was six kind of shaped around that. Toyota Supras. Yeah, six-second Toyota Supras, the, the yeah. six-speed, you know, ones from Titan Performance and all those guys. But, uh uh you know 1320 video back when that was just you know hard to get but yeah no that cars uh going to car meets it was you know a daily thing or a weekly thing or a weekend thing and just seeing all the progress everyone had made on their cars week in week out and then going to the shows and doing competitions um and then of course i i owned a business where i, I did car automotive customization mainly painting and stuff but uh, that was just like a big thing for me. Uh, not so much nowadays. Uh, I've I've kind of toned it down. I I don't have the bankroll to do that anymore. So I <laughs> have a, sure. a daily driver. Unfortunately, the, the daily driver is is costing me more than any kind of modified car I've ever had ever did. But that's just <laughs> that's just luck, really. You know, I you've owned right. so many cars. One's gonna be a dud. Absolutely. Well, hey, man, I really truly appreciate you taking out so much time to uh to answer a couple questions yeah, uh, yeah i hope cool. the viewers viewers like it i'm gonna leave a link to his description or i'm sorry i'm gonna leave a link to his twitch stream in the description i highly recommend you check it out he's super entertaining funny guy he's a really kick-ass gamer uh oh, wow. check it out and you'll see what you're saying what i'm saying you definitely are man you're, you're it, one man. of my top favorites to watch appreciate that yeah come check me out guys Check him out. He's awesome. <laughs> anyway, I'm Bormai. That's Entire Cities. Thanks for stopping by. You guys have a good one. I'm out.